So what's this actually doing? So if you have a template, could be any template, the minimum criteria is you need a top surface. If you have components underneath, that's fine, but it's not going to be looking at the components underneath. It's only going to be analyzing the top surface. Okay, so just going to be looking at template points and the top surface of your template to begin with. Anything underneath, it ignores. That's why when you use this tool, you technically can just have an open component on the top that represents your pavement surface just to begin. Then what, it, what does it do? It compares the vertices in the top template points to the vertices in the existing ground terrain, and it finds the minimum or the maximum vertical difference value. It'll then add at the backbone thickness if you specified one. It'll add in overlay and the milling values to determine an adjustment value. And again, the adjustment is completely independent of anything other than the top template and the existing ground. Okay, so it's important to understand that. And then when it's done, it's just going to create a new ideal vertical alignment based on those settings that you define. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these settings. There's a lot of different settings in here, so it's important to understand what they do. So let's go through this. So the first one is the backbone thickness that you're gonna see. So the backbone thickness specifies the thickness from the profile grade line elevation to the bottom of the backbone components. Okay, so that represents the actual thickness of your pavement buildup. And this distance, that thickness, it's added to the adjusted PGL elevation. So typically the backbone thickness is going to be equal to your template pavement thickness in the area where your milling and overlay will occur. Okay. Now you're going to notice some of these pictures that I'm showing here. They, look, they may look familiar to you. If you're an old inroads user, these are the same pictures that they used to have on the dialog box, which they're no longer there. But I've included these pictures because I think they're very helpful in helping you understand how to use the tool. So the next mode or next uh, setting that we need to take a look at is the use minimum overlay. And this is when the surface is evaluated for the point that is vertically nearest to the backbone. And the location of the template then would be adjust it upwards to maintain that minimum overlay distance. Okay, so you can see here, I'm going along my existing ground and I put in a minimum overlay value and I make an adjustment to the backbone bottom of the, but near the controlling point. Okay, now if, I'm, if I toggle on the use maximum milling, okay, we can have it mill out a maximum amount and then also have it perform a minimum amount of overlay in addition to that to make the adjustment. Okay, so what does this really do from a really basic level? Let's say you just set everything down to zero. You set your backbone at zero and you set your minimum overlay thickness at zero and you have the minimum overlay modes set. Then the PGL that's going to be calculated. It's going to be adjusting the top of the template until it's completely above or just touches the existing surface. It's going to find this zero overlay point. And then if you were to add the backbone thickness in there, then it would raise up the template by that backbone thickness at that critical point. And that's how it would make the adjustment in that scenario. Now, with the minimum overlay in combination with the backbone thickness and the overlay thickness, what you would get is it would find the critical point. So in this case, right here, it would add the minimum overlay thickness, and it would also add in the backbone thickness that you had specified in the dialog. So you're going to get backbone plus minimum overlay thickness for the adjusted value.
you can see that would really give you a much higher vertical. Then finally, we can also utilize the use maximum milling option where we could come in and say, okay, well, we want to mill out two inches. We want to have a minimum of one inch of overlay, and then we have a backbone thickness of maybe two inches. And it would take in all that into account and make that adjustment. So it would mill out the two inches here, add in the one inch of overlay thickness, and then add in the backbone thickness to make the adjustment upwards to, for the adjusted profile grade line. The uh, next setting that you can use, or the next option that you have, is the use, mill use minimum milling option. So when this option is specified, the surface is evaluated for the critical point that is vertically farthest from the top of the backbone. Okay, so a lot of times you may want to use this if you have potholes or low points in the surface. Um, so basically this option traces along the existing ground, compares that farthest vertical point in relation to the top of the template. You can see here is our critical point on the surface that so looks there. And it compares that to the top of the template and then kind of places the template at that location and then it would make the adjustment upwards based on whatever your backbone value is and maybe if you use the maximum milling in this case. Um, so let's take a look at this again, more detail, really low level. So if we were to set everything for zero, set zero milling, the PGL would be calculated by adjusting the top of the template until it was completely below and just touching the existing surface at the critical point. And then if you were to add in the backbone thickness or add in a, a value for the backbone thickness and it's going to raise up the template. So it hits that point, as you can see here. Uh, it would be zero milling. And then if we use the uh, maximum milling option, it's disabled, the milling can be any depth, so you can get really deep if you need to. Um, but if you need to limit the milling and you just want to have a maximum milling thickness, you toggle that option on and key in a value to uh, set the maximum amount of milling that you can have. Okay. Another portion of the uh, tool that you need to pay attention to are the range settings. This is the uh, horizontal range that it searches for template points across the top of the template. So you need to specify a range or a limit for it to search across the top of the template. So typically you're probably gonna select your edges of pavement on the left and right sides or your edges of shoulder, whatever you're trying to search across the top of the template. You need to select two template points to define the left and the right range limits. And then you also need to tell it where to look for the existing ground range as well along the existing ground. So the existing ground has a bunch of different options. You can tell it to use the same template points that you picked for the top template range. You can have it look for alignments, or feature definitions, or you can use fixed offsets. There are a few different options you have there for the existing ground range. And then finally, the point analysis. So once you have your template point ranges defined, you need to tell it how to compare the points to the existing surface. Do you want to compare the template points only where there are template points, or do you want to compare the template points to all locations where there's cross-section vertices? Okay, so you can have it use the template point range you can have the solution option where it can follow all cross-section points or just the template points only. Okay, so that's a, if you just did template points only, it would be these red vertical lines this is where it would be looking at the existing ground. If you did examine all cross-section points, then it, you'd get to see where the green ones are and the red ones. It would do all these. Okay. It can also set a maximum vertical difference between the uh, analysis as well. So if you need to limit it for some reason, to have it say, okay, I don't want it to look more than three feet above or below, um, then you could key in a value there. That's at the maximum vertical difference for us, just the distance between here and here, so you can limit that.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.